Good morning to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for the morning of August the 4th. Happy Friday to you, 2017. A lot of talk about what's happening in the tropics with these two areas of interest. Invest 99L, way out here in the eastern Atlantic, and Invest area, this is 99L, and now Invest 90L. And just a real quick reminder, what do those mean? Those are just a numbering or a naming system, whichever way you want to look at it, to help keep up with which area is which, uh, for one, and two, to, si to assign uh, resources, satellite floater images, recon, model output, whatever. It's just the first step in the process. And so this one over here is Invest Area 99, and this one is Invest Area 90. But as they go from 90 to 99, uh, and it just happens to be that this was the last in the sequence so far this season. And then we start back over with 90 again in the letter L for Atlantic. So here we are. This is uh, the one here. Uh, let's see if it'll let me. Nope, oh, i got to go back. Let's do it this way. Got a mouse over it for it to work, not just an image there. Mark, 20% in the short term, and I'm going to show you why in a minute. But then that starts to increase to 60%. And uh, this one looks like it could be a problem maybe for the Yucatan and then portions of the Western Gulf as we get into next week. And then this system, 90L, or 99L, I'm sorry, 50% uh, chance of development over the next two days, so half and half there, and then 80% over the next five. And this one has generated quite a bit of ruckus on the Internet simply because uh, people can look at the model output and it goes beyond five days, obviously. A lot of it, the global models, and they see the results. And, you know, as, as negative as some people uh, think that that can be, I look at it as, hey, you know what, at least it's got people's attention, and nobody looking at it can say that they were caught off guard. Um, many people might not understand what they're looking at, and if people post a singular image, you know, showing a hurricane, wherever, you know, coming in and, and hitting some spot directly without any context to it, I can understand where that's a problem. But overall, the awareness of people uh, this day and age, you, like I said, you cannot say that people were caught off guard, uh, so maybe that's not such a bad thing. So let's take a look at the uh, satellite animation for this morning. This is the sort of the black and white infrared, if you will, the visible images. Uh, it's still early enough that the sun hasn't come up in the satellite shot far enough west. You get that little line that goes across. So I just figured I'd show the black and white infrared. And you notice down here in the Caribbean with 90L, there really isn't much to it. But there's energy here, and I'll show you that in a minute. And uh, that looks like it's going to try to blossom once it gets over here. More than likely somewhere between Jamaica and the Yucatan is where this comes to life. And then out here is this conglomeration of cloud cover associated with 99L. Now, I want to show you a couple of interesting things. This is from Joe Bastardi, and he posted it today, uh, just a little while ago. And this is the ECMWF Ensemble Prediction System location of cyclones right there over the next 15 days. All right? And so it, this is really interesting because here's 99L and all the possible tracks and the color code up here gives you an idea of the intensity via pressure and you see with 99L it doesn't really do much with it some 51 members of the ensemble prediction system really does not do much with 99L on the other hand it's much more aggressive with 90L including a member up here into Louisiana up here into Texas, but a majority of the ensemble members for the EPS system, again, the European Ensemble Prediction System, uh, into areas south of Brownsville, Texas, with 90L. And you see that the intensities, once you start getting into the blues and the reds, you're getting a much more intense system, and that really does not happen until after the Yucatan, so don't expect much development uh, at all from 90L until probably the Bay of Campeche, but we'll see. Again, this is a whole bunch of different model members, not just one operational 
run. And you say, well, what is all this hullabaloo up here? Well, these are your mid-latitude cyclones. So this is all of your cyclone locations, not just tropical. So that's the European. This is the GFS and its ensemble system. This is called the ensemble forecast system. And it's a completely different story, especially for 99L. And you can see that most of its members develop it uh, pretty quickly and pretty robustly and aim it towards the Southwest Atlantic. That is a more accurate term or way to put it than saying that it aims it at the United States. But, you know, because this time frame, if this is going to happen, is much more believable than anything that happens up in here farther out in time. I think that, or further out in time, whichever way you're supposed to say it. But you get the idea. So quite a difference. And then similar overall that we get intensification in the western gulf from 90L. So at least this part checks out in terms of matching up. But what's happening in the deep tropics here with 99L, you know, this concerns me and puts a question mark that maybe this doesn't develop at all. I'm just saying maybe. Remember last year, 99L was the same pain in the butt, and it got up to 80% chance from the Hurricane Center, and it took forever. And I believe that went on to eventually become Hermine, but not until way over here, not way out here. So we'll see. And we're going to go over on the afternoon update more of kind of trying to dissect things as to why or why not with 99L. We'll address some of the issues, so to speak, with that. But what I want to show you real quick, this is the European 850 millibar because uh, the system down here, 90L, being closer to uh, where people live, I figured this is more relevant at the moment. So I want to show you this. This is from Levi Cowan at tropicaltidbits.com. And what we're looking at is the 850 millibar cyclonic vorticity. And you can see that right here. And so the 850 millibars, what's that mean? Well, this is around 5,000 feet in the atmosphere. So we're almost a mile up off the ocean's surface or the planet's surface. And we're looking at the different shadings in here uh, indicating spin or energy in the atmosphere. It's a simple way to look at it. And so we're going to go through time. This is the initial condition from last night's run, initialized at 0Z, August 4th. So this was initialized overnight, or yesterday, 8 o'clock Eastern time. So this is the overnight run. Remember, the Euros run twice a day. That's it. So here's the area we're going to watch, and then how this evolves as it moves to the Caribbean. I'm just going to go through each tab. So this is 24 hours out. Not really anything out there. 48 hours out, we start to get a little bit of a hint of, you know, certainly you can see the curvature in the wind barbs here, that eventually some of this energy is going to try to consolidate. And of course, anything happening with 99L is not showing up quite yet on this particular field of view. Uh, so if we go on out here to 72 hours, now the European uh, does have this developing south of the Caymans between Jamaica here and the northern Yucatan. So there's your energy starting to consolidate and still really nothing coming into the scene yet. It's just too far to the east still at 72 hours. At 96 hours, uh, 90L approaching the Yucatan, fairly well developed uh, in this particular run of the model. This is four days out and then still nothing coming into the scene yet from 99L. And then finally here at day five, uh, this is pretty alarming. I mean, it is. You get this system that comes across the Yucatan here, very well developed at the 850 millibar level. It's round. It's not amorphic in shape. You know, the energy is concentrated around the center. You know, the Euro here considered a very reliable global model, and it's depicting a pretty uh, strong system here, and yet that's 99L there, all right? And if you saw the GFS from last night, you know that it paints a very different picture. So, oh, it's just like, what do you do? Well, I'll tell you what you do. You slow down if you're all ramped up about it, and you just wait and you watch. Uh, every 6 to 12 hours, depending on how you want to look at it, you get a new set of model output. 
and we see what the models say. And we go from there. It's guidance. It's model guidance. It's not model gospel. So remember that, all right? Just relax. We've got plenty of time to watch, and I think the obvious more important feature is closer to home for a lot of people, and that's the Caribbean, eventually Gulf of Mexico, Bay of Campeche system. In the meantime, out in the western Pacific, Typhoon Noru here, uh, getting ready to make that turn towards Kyushu. Uh, Josh Morgerman is here. James Reynolds, who I believe lives on Okinawa, but I'm not sure. Uh, he is a Pacific typhoon, also a volcano enthusiast, uh, but a typhoon interceptor. It's just the word chaser, it bothers me. I don't know why. But uh, James and Josh are both going to be where this typhoon makes landfall, hopefully, if they get everything right. At least they have accurate radar and all the wonders of the first world technologies to take advantage of down there. But what I want to show you is the intensity here comes up to about 90 knots uh, by about 2 p.m. Eastern Time tomorrow. And then it turns the corner and makes landfall here. It could get a little stronger than that. And uh, it indeed is stronger by about 5 knots than what it was yesterday. If you remember, I talked about that. And if we look at a satellite picture, uh, this posted from Alex Lamers. And um, he works for, well, let's want to make sure I get it right. Uh, meteorologist, and he's a nerd. <laughs> That's classic. Uh, but it, it's more than that. He works up in Washington, D.C. That's funny. I try to help. That's just great. So anyway, let's just go back to this. Uh, the nerd meteor. Hey, I am too. I'll take it. I'm a geographer. I'm not technically a meteorologist, but I'm a nerd too. Anyhow, you can see the convection starting to wrap around the west side of Nauru as it moves over that oceanic heat content. And you can just barely see right up here at the top of the image. Uh, that's the bottom part of uh, the southern part of Japan there as this closes in. So we'll be watching this pretty closely for our friends, literally, <laughs> in Japan. Um, so then I want to show you the GFS from the overnight run just to sort of contrast what the Euro showed. This is a wider shot uh, of the basin, not just the western part. And here's the system to watch here with 99L, and there's some energy somewhere in here associated with 90L. So let's put this into motion, and then I'm going to scroll down so we can watch this. So you see this consolidates pretty quick in the GFS, 99L. really comes together fast. We're at 72 hours there, 96 hours there, and it's a hurricane at that point in the model, more than likely. You know, I, I can't say that for sure. But it looks like a hurricane in the model field, moving steadily along to the west-northwest. Um, so it's interesting. It's like, is this going to happen or not? Then you see the energy coming together over here. In fact, let's just start over and focus on this corridor here. And you see at about 72 hours or so, right there, energy comes off uh, and consolidates between Jamaica and the Yucatan, so at least that matches what the European shows. So that's good, I mean, in terms of being able to trust the models. It's not necessarily good at all that a cyclone could be headed for land, but you, you got to understand, if you can't trust these models, then it really becomes a problem, obviously. And so I guess it's a good thing in that regard that this is consistent with the Euro, but I'm still puzzled as to why this is not I mean, I have my suspicions, been reading what people have said on blogs and so forth, and again, we're going to talk about that. We'll sort of play detective later in the day when I do an update uh, this afternoon, probably around 2 p.m., 2.30, something like that, Eastern Time. Finally, as of August 4th, today, Phil Klotzbach and his group at Colorado State University releasing their final update for the season in terms of the overall outlook and they are maintaining their forecast for above normal activity because as we have watched ourselves uh, no El Nino, the ENSO El Nino Southern Oscillation Phenomenon is going to be neutral, neutral conditions yep, uh, where have you heard that all the last four months <laughs> and pat yourself on the back much Mark uh, we just saw it together, I mean come on, you know uh, I'm not even going to talk about it anymore. Anyway, so the final numbers, uh, for what it's worth, 
16 named storms total, 8 hurricanes. And this is the important part to me, right there. The 8 and the 3. We still have 8 hurricanes to get through, and out of those 8, 3 are expected to become major hurricanes or Category 3 or higher. With a total accumulated cyclone energy output ACE of 135, and that's, you know, a little bit higher than normal. Normally, I guess, depending on what time frame you look at, we have a score of 92. Remember, the ACE is kind of like how much a team averages in a season. And then you have a particular game and what they're expected to get during that game. So if we just pick uh, some random team, I'll say the L.A. Lakers back in the heyday, okay? They're just trying to set an example here. Maybe they average 92 points a game uh, for the last decade, but this game they're playing some other team that's horrible, and they're expected to score 135. That's what that means. Hey, I have four apps that are ready to be updated. Good for me. So, busy season ahead. Certainly we saw that coming. Um, let's get rid of the yellow. And this is important, too. Entire U.S. coastline, 62% chance for a major, at least one Category 3, 4, or 5. That's really, really important. Uh, talking about a better than 50% chance uh, by a decent margin here. Almost, I mean, oh man, I don't know my fractions that well, but you know, 62% chance, that's, that's getting up there. Let's just say that. And for the U.S. East Coast as a whole, uh, it's about 7% above the norm, which is 31, or at least the average anyway, or the norm. So that's important because those major hurricanes typically cause 80% of the damage associated with hurricanes at all, and it has been since 2005 that we have had any major hurricanes at the U.S. So, you know, take it for what it's worth. The active season is unfolding in front of us, and we just have to see how things pan out. And hopefully everybody has been preparing all along in some form or fashion, whatever that may be and however that fits your budget and your lifestyle. Uh, hey, everybody's different. All right, well, that's it from me for this morning. Again, uh, as much as I have time to do these, I mean, this is my job, but I have family too. But I will be doing two of these a day for the foreseeable future, a morning one usually and an afternoon one. And sometimes it'll be an afternoon and then an evening, just depending on the schedule. So the next one will be, let's just call it, by 3 o'clock Eastern Time, will be posted. That way we can have the 12Z GFS and the 12Z Euro, and we can really compare and contrast what that shows for 90L and 99L as well. All right, have a great rest of your morning. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Mark Suddeth for HurricaneTrack.com, and I'll talk to you again this afternoon.